Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about the Muse relationship, about INFJs and ENFPs as partners. Does it work? Does it not work? Well, truth is, I've never heard about a more controversial pairing. Yes, people either hate the idea of an INFJ dating an ENFP, or they love it. I see ENFPs roasting INFJs as the worst partners, and I see INFJs roasting ENFPs as the worst partners. And I see INFJs raising ENFPs to the skies, making it the ideal of the ideal, the soulmate of soulmates, the most perfect partner for an INFJ. So how can a partner, how can a pairing be so controversial? Well, I believe I have the answer. Now what I've noticed is that INFJs and ENFPs are like the muse reflection of each other, it's the mirror reflection of one another. When you look at an INFJ as an ENFP, you go, hey, that's me, but different. Hey, that's the inwards out version of me. Hey, that person is playing on keys that I would like to play on, that I wish I played on, but that I don't play on. Often what we tend to see them is a shared value, shared interests, shared passions. They value and they're fascinated by things that we are a little fascinated by as well, but also afraid of. Yes, there are. We all have this identity of expressions and behaviors and beliefs that we kind of want to have or idealize having, but that we don't have. And this is also why it's such an attractive pairing. I do believe this is one of the most common relationship choices. And I think it's a very good opportunity for a lasting relationship. I think that this can become a lasting relationship if you're able to deal with the experience of these fears, anxieties, and vulnerabilities. Now, if you are not ready to be confronted with these experiences, the view of uh, this muse can easily become rather the view of a demon. It can be that you're looking at the person that reminded you of your missed opportunities as an INFJ. It can feel like you're looking at the person reminding you of missed opportunities and choices and things that you wish you had gone for that you didn't go for. Or they can remind you of opportunities that you jumped for that turned out to be empty, of the experiences you had that turned out to lead nowhere, of the anxieties you had that you over the failures that you did because you hoped but it turned out to mean nothing. Yeah. Uh, this is a relationship pairing that requires you to be vulnerable and to hope and to try and to jump and to do things that you're scared of. And that can be a scary experience. It can be a scary experience and sometimes it can be a failure. At times it won't work. At times uh, the speculations an INFJ offer, the hope and the insight into the future, turn out to be fruitless and to lead nowhere. And at times they turn out to lead exactly where they meant to lead. Or close to it. At times this can be a boost. This can be amazing. This can be a journey. A transformative journey. Often people who start dating partners of this muse pairing change a lot. Within just one year or two years they change and transform a lot. Yeah I think no other pairing has such transformative potential as the muse dynamic. Now there are quite a few issues and struggles and opportunities here and I want to talk about them in a functional perspective. Yes, INFJs as feeling and judging types tend to be communicators. We share perspectives, viewpoints and ways to look at things. We share arguments and ways to see and approach a situation. Feeling and judging is diplomatic. It's addressing different ways and different viewpoints and it's looking at the best viewpoint the overall level of how to look at and regard a situation. It's argumentative in its nature, it's not conclusive. Now this is the main possibility and pitfall in the communication between an INFJ and an ENFP, because the ENFP is like a reporter. They're listening very intently to everything they hear. They're going, is that right? Is that wrong? Can I trust that? Can I not trust that? Does that fit? Does that not fit? And the ENFPs with feeling and perceiving tend to dismiss opinions and thoughts that are bad very quickly. That's not right. That's not correct. That's wrong. That's evil. That's rude. That's good. That's bad. ENFPs are giving immediate feedback on what they hear and what they like and dislike. 
as an INFJ shares, and they're reporters, they're constantly gathering stories and information about the INFJ. Now at times, the key struggle, especially in stress, is that the ENFP feels there is nothing conclusive coming from the INFJ. No conclusion, nothing tangible to hold on to, no exact statement or no exact goal. What is it exactly that the INFJ wants? For the ENFP perspective, it might feel like the INFJ is simply sharing arguments, but not their real view. And that's the level of growth for the INFJ. To realize your own viewpoint, to realize your own perspective, and to stick by what you believe in, and to stand up for it and to say, this is what I want. And from the ENFP perspective, it's that ability to be able to entertain values and perspectives and viewpoints that you might dismiss immediately, uh, to learn to consider an idea or a value before you dismiss it, to actually go over it a few times. Could that be true or could that not be true? Is that actually right or is that wrong? And uh, that's the key goal. Often uh, ENFPs make up their minds too quickly. They decide too quickly if it's right or wrong, when in reality they are not necessarily so sure, not as sure as they might think. And it's often in this FJFP dynamic that the shame comes up. You might think in this situation that what you're going to say or what you believe is shameful or inappropriate or that it's not good. And uh, the question here is how passionate are you about what you believe in and how ready are you to face that and to express that when the ENFP is asking you about it. Sometimes they might ask questions that you're afraid to answer. But often, the thing you can trust on with an ENFP is they do share your values. So if you speak truthfully and honestly, they will often agree with what you have to say. Similarly, for an FP, it's about kind of learning to speak up for yourself. And to say and to share and to go, maybe I want this or maybe I want that. Even if it feels a little weird to say it, even if it feels... Like you're not sure about it. Um, to entertain the thought that you might like something that you have never tried before. That's something an ENFP can learn from. Thinking about it, INFJ and ENFPs have a lot of differences in lifestyle and how they look at and how they regard their life and what kind of life they live. INFJs live slow, changing, philosophical, contemplative lives, lives of introspection and thinking and reflection about life and existential issues. INFJs might look at like they're, they might, it might look like there's nothing happening in an INFJ, that they're all thoughts and thoughts and perspectives and no action, that they're missing out on life and all the opportunities and everything happening around them. And that's actually true to some extent. That's a valued viewpoint, and that's often why an INFJ could even need an ENFP to remind them of this. Now, from the ENFP point of view, it can look as if the ENFP is rushing through life and that they're constantly chasing after new things and that they're never taking the time to reflect on what they actually want and what they actually need to be happy. And there's the deep contrast and the conflict of an INFJ and an ENFP. There's frustration in here. Frustration over opportunities that you missed as an INFJ Frustration over things that you did that you didn't think first before as an ENFP. Things that you could have reflected on or introspected on before you jumped. And the NFJs and ENFPs have a lot to learn from each other here. Learn about why you do what you do, what made you do it, and learn about what's possible as an INFJ. Think about not just what you want or what you envision for your future, but also what steps you can take right here, right now, to make that future happen, or to move at least a little closer to it. Um, to jump for an opportunity, even if you haven't thought about it once in a while as an INFJ. Uh, even if you don't know where it leads, to jump for it, to, to dare to jump for it. And here's the question of fear. Fear, because an NJ likes to speculate about everything. We think in general terms, we predict the future, we say this is probably what I think will happen, this is where I see this leading, this is where I think this might go. And INFJs sometimes dismiss possibilities and opportunities and change that doesn't seem likely. 
there's a likelihood that this relationship might work, but I don't think it will, so I won't even go for it. Yeah, that's the fear talking INFJs. Um, your speculative powers can tell you what's probably going to happen, but sometimes that can make you blind to what might actually happen. There are things you can't predict, and an ENFP is one of them. ENFPs are always relativistic. They're always bringing up change and opportunity and options. This is the option, and this option, and this option. ENFPs can see options that you don't even think about because you dismiss them too quickly. And here's the thing, INFJs sometimes even dismiss thinking that an ENFP might be a good relationship prospect because they're, they've dismissed it too quickly. That's the question. Can you learn not to dismiss opportunities too early? Can you learn to entertain something that might seem impossible at first? With an ENFP, you should definitely try. Finally, with IF and EF, something worth reminding yourself about is INFJs are counselors, ENFPs are promoters, ENFPs are thinking about what they like and dislike in you, your character, who you are, how you act, how you treat others. INFJs, how do you treat others? What do you do in each moment? How do you actually act? Are you cowardly or are you brave? Are you good-hearted or are you evil? And those are all questions that an ENFP will bring up to you. They're going to be showing to you how you actually act, what you actually do, how you actually behave. And sometimes that can be difficult to be confronted with. INFJs always think they have good intentions in everything they do, that they have good purpose and behind their action, that they mean well. And they often do. Uh, we, are, we do mean well and we think about why we do what we do and we seek to have good purposes and good intentions. But sometimes we're a bit oblivious to what we do in the situation. We might be rude, thoughtless or careless without realizing it. We might say and do things that go directly against our intentions and how we actually want to do and behave. And there is the growth, the final level of growth. Realizing your intentions... Realizing why you do what you do, but also what you do. Learning about who you actually are, not just who you try to be. ENFPs think in archetypal terms, on an archetypal level, how you come across good and evil, right and wrong. INFJs think in good conduct, good intentions, good motivations. And there is something an INFJ can teach an ENFP. To think about why you're doing what you're doing before you do it. And to find and ensure that you have good intentions. Because sometimes bad intentions in good action can be just as bad as good intentions in bad action. Sometimes bad intentions can cloud your judgment. If you're coming at or doing something positive but from a perspective of bad intentions. That might cloud your judgment. And that might cause your good actions to fall on bad ears. Now it's important to consider your level and your age and your maturity and your issues and your growth. Sometimes it's better to find yourself before you go into this relationship, to find who you are on your own. And sometimes it's good to work on and to become more mature and to process your issues. But if you are ready for the challenge, go for it. INFJs and ENFPs, like I said before, are one of the more common choices. Another popular choice is the ENTP for an INFJ and INTJ for the ENFP. Another common choice is the ISTJ for the ENFP and the ESTP for the INFJ. Another common choice is the INFJ for an INFJ and the ENFP for an ENFP. And uh, I won't say any of them are necessarily better than the others, but I will say what I personally believe. I feel very happy in my relationship. I have grown so much thanks to my ENFP girlfriend. I have learned so much. I have experienced so much that I never even thought I would experience. I have made so many changes and I have transformed and I have become a better person thanks to my ENFP. And I do think that most people's experiences of this pairing is positive, even if there are some bad examples and some gone wrong scenarios. But that's all about me. What's your experience? What relationship pairing do you think is the best? And what are your personal experiences of this particular pairing? Thank you all for watching this video and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.